one. Welcome back to Behind the Play. My name is Alex Adams, and today I'm very excited to introduce the ultimate insider, David Pagnotta of the fourth period. Thanks so much for, for taking the time, David, and doing this. Uh, we can always stop the podcast if you need to break a a, a, a trade, a signing, <laughs> or anything like that. So I do really appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, no, definitely, Alex. Thanks, thanks for having me. I, I'm not anticipating much today, uh, okay. but hey, you never know. You never know. I, as as someone that covers the Sens, I hope there's no Shane Pinto uh, signing while we're doing this, <laughs> uh, and, and for your sake as well. So um, I just want to ask you, David, yeah as like an insider and just a little bit about your career journey. I know you, you've been in this business for I think 20, 20 some years, maybe just what about, kind yeah. of inspired you to, to get into it and, and uh, maybe outline a little bit about your career. Yeah. Um, well, I always loved the sport. Uh, always loved hockey. Um, wasn't really able to play it growing up. I grew up in Montreal, which, you know, mm -hmm. kind of weird, but um you know, my, my parents came from overseas and uh, never really got into the whole hockey thing and the physicality of the sport. My mom was a little standoffish mm -hmm. on that for, the, you know, that in football. Um, so I played other sports, but um, I had a lot of friends, obviously, that, that played hockey. I always loved the game. Um, you know, when the Canadians won the Cup in 93, that was a big, mm -hmm. like, core, core memory for me as a kid, being able to experience that and then going to Habs games and um, just taking in that the, the in-game atmosphere and just everything that kind of followed around the sport. And I just, I fell in love with it and I, I wanted to get involved in some capacity. Um, so, you know, I kind of backdoored it a little bit, mm -hmm. um, you know, 20 years ago, you have a website, you're, you know, you're legit automatically. And, and uh, you know, things obviously have, have changed, but um, you know, back then, it, it allowed for more access. So I would call teams and just say, Hey, can I interview so-and-so and, -so? and mm -hmm get some calls back and I was able to cover certain events and, and um, you know, team Canada's world juniors. They used to, I, I'm in Toronto now when I'm, when my family and I moved out here, um, you know, the, the world juniors were, were, they were practicing at York university. So it wasn't too far from me. I was able to cover it. I got credentialed for it. Uh, and then just kind of continued this kind of trend on, mm -hmm. on, on my end. And, you know, talked to some players that have played and some of them are still playing uh, they're getting up there, but they're playing and, um, I just, just getting information and, and getting, being able to interview people and then kind of slowly evolving, getting into radio and things like that. So, um, a bit of a trickle effect from that regard, and then just continuing to grow. And with the fourth period, we had a magazine for, for quite some time and, um, the lifestyle angle of that really allowed for more opportunities and getting to know people in the game on a, on a deeper level. And, just harnessing all of those relationships and, and the trust you build with people um, just kind of continued to evolve from a career perspective. Well, what does it mean to you to see the fourth period now? Like you have so many journalists all over and, you know, you're going to events and like, just yeah. like, as this is kind of your, your child, what, what does that mean to you? <laughs> uh, it's definitely cool. Um, it's definitely, you know, something that I, I, I try to tell myself and I try to acknowledge not to take for granted. Mm -hmm. Um, cause it is, it is a privilege. I get to go to hockey games. I do about a hundred games a year, wow. including, including playoffs and, and, you know, it, it can get a little tiring and it can be, yeah. you know, you're, you, you're like, Oh, here we go. Another hockey game. But, <laughs> um, you know, would I have traded this in? No, definitely not. And to be able to, you know, get to a point where we're, we're hosting events and, mm -hmm. um, you know, putting out different items and, and, different type of content and building relationships and friendships with so many people throughout the year and going to the Stanley cup final and, and voting for the NHL awards. And uh, yeah, I was lucky enough to vote for the con Smythe um, this past Stanley cup final. So wow. to have all these different things, definitely very cool. And, and we're growing still. Um, there's still a lot more we want to do and we will be introducing this season, cool. um, which we're, which we're excited about, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's cool to see. It's a little surreal at times. Um, but uh, it, it's awesome. I know you've transitioned a little bit the, the past couple of years to be more of an insider. One, how much of that is 24 seven? And, and two, how do you become an insider? Like, how did you like, just explain to us a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, I, I, I never liked that term for myself. Okay. Uh, originally, like before, because mm -hmm. I, I wasn't really um, to, you know, to be, to be perfectly frank, I wasn't as, engaged in the 
insider world as the others that that are part of that um that that they are uh you know i would get information i would hear certain things a lot um a lot of relationships with players and agents and, and all of that kind of led to a lot of the info over the years um and it was really a few years ago where i had to kind of make a decision do i want to continue in this path and, and grow on it or are we taking things in a different direction and and the information that i kind of got at that time almost kind of forced me into getting more entrenched in, into the insider um, kind of world. Um, you know, a lot of it is relationships w without question. And a lot of it is trust, uh, a hell of a lot of trust. There's, there's a lot of, you know, sharing and, and, you know, trying to get to the bottom of certain things, but at the same time, you know, 80% of the stuff that I hear, you can't yeah. put out um, for a variety of different reasons. And, you know, balancing that being on the phone constantly um, checking in with people you know a lot of it is 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 friendships and just building on that and hey you hear something through the grapevine and you try to you know go to the people that you think will provide that most accurate information until you get to the bottom of certain things so it's it's definitely a lot um, and, and it can be very very time consuming you always have to be um, kind of on top of things in terms of the communication with the different people that you speak with, whether they're on the team side, the player side, the league side, um, you, you always have to be in, in constant communication and constant flow with the, with, with the people that you talk to, um, which is an interesting balancing act for what we do along with the content that we're putting out along with planning certain events um, mm -hmm. You know, the magazine is, there's a bit of a revival in that respect. So you'll start, you'll see something later on in the season. Cool. Um, but it's, it's really being busy for, for quite some time. I, I take, um, I try to take like August really to just escape it all as much as I can um, until, you know, Pittsburgh decides to I was gonna get say. Eric Carlson. <laughs> <laughs> then when that when that where, kind of stuff happens, where were you? Where were you when that happened? Like, were you on a beach? Were you? <laughs> I, I was. I was. Um, I was in New York. I was there for a wedding, oh, okay. um, and I had woken up to a bunch of text messages. Uh, and it might have been a little groggy, and uh, I'm going. Oh, you've got to be kidding me! Uh, I guess this is this is kind of happening. And then they released yeah. it, and yeah. Um, I want to go to like the, the trust aspect. And obviously you say like you build relationships, you've been in the, around the league for 20 years, but wh where is that kind of line for you in terms of sourcing when you say, okay, I'm going to, you know, say per sources, David Pagnota, send sign Shane Pinto. I'm just making something up. Right. Right. But right. How right. do you make that? Like what's kind of the deciding factor in, in releasing or different factors when you, kind of put something out as an insider? There's always different variables that come into play because one, it could come directly from the source. So whether it's player, agent, team rep, uh, okay. whoever, whoever it may be, then, okay, well, I guess this is pretty, pretty <laughs> solid and we can roll with that. Um, you know, others, it's other teams that may hear certain things or other people around the league that, Hey, I'm hearing this, I've heard that. And then you have to try to pinpoint certain, certain things. Um, it's not just a GM feeding you information. It's not just an agent feeding you or play. like there's, there's a variety of different um, people that you need to talk to, to stay in constant communication. And, and once you feel confident enough in your information, um, then you put it out there. You know, there's, as I said, there's a lot of stuff that we hear that I could say, okay, I'm going to roll with this. Or at the same time, you hear things and you're being trusted to not break that information. Oh, you know, there's okay. a team you know, okay, we're doing this. We'll give you, you know, we'll give you an interview or we'll do this or we'll do that. And sometimes it slips, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but Hey, just be on guard or just be ready. So, you know, at the same time, because of a lot of the editorial we do, the team's going to come out and sign somebody, for example. Um, well, okay, let's be, let's be timely and they've signed them. Well, here's our, here's our, our, our analysis of the signing a few minutes later. Um, you know, typically, I mean, that does happen quite a bit as well. Um, mm -hmm. Some teams prefer to put out certain bits of information themselves. Um, they'll give you that heads up. And then you put out that analysis piece or that overview, whatever it may be, whether it's on video or on air um, or just the editorial side. So you get a bit of a, a head start in that regard too. You don't always have to break the stuff, but if you can come out with some good content and, and some good analysis after the fact, 
um, you know, that that's what you want to do. Like there's going to be an announcement next week from a Western conference team about uh, a contract. Okay. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not going to say what it is because I've been yeah. trusted not to, uh, but we'll have, you know, a, a, a pretty quick turnaround in terms of when that gets released to here's the analysis of, of and the impact of what the signing means. I want to go off that because it feels as though not in just in hockey, but in all sports, I'm a big basketball guy too. And Woj and <laughs> Shams don't seem to love each other. Just, I don't mean, <laughs> I don't mean in terms of like you have bad ill against other people in the industry, but what is, do you feel a level of competition with like a Drager, a Friedman? Um, how does that kind of work for you? Well, I mean, those guys are, you know, that's top tier, right? I, I'm not, I'm not near that, but um you know, the, these guys, um, I mean, look, it, it's healthy competition. You know, you mm-hmm. want to be able to put that out there and, and whatever you find, it, there is, um, you know, there is a race, so to speak, right? You want to be one of the first or the first to put something out, but at the same time, and they'll all tell you the same thing, it has to be right. Mm-hmm. You know, as you want to make sure that the info is accurate. And if you're putting something out there and it's not, you're not have doing you, your job. Have you ever had that before where or an experience where it's like, I'm like 90%, you go there, post it, and then it's backfires or, or something where you. Yeah. Very, yeah. I mean, there, there are certain, and certain things fall through. Like there may be a team that's making a trade and they feel super confident that it's going to happen. And then. And at the last minute it falls apart. It's happened. It's happened before. Same on the signing side of things and, you know, with free agents and things like that. So sometimes that does happen. Um, you have to be careful. And, and this is why. And I see this a lot on social media, whether it's me or to Elliot or Dregs or LeBron or whomever, CJ, um, it, it, you know, it's all oh, they, they're wording it in a specific way to cover their ass or they're wording it like what well, we're, we're not. We don't care about that. Yeah. Honestly, it's we're just trying to provide the most accurate information. And sometimes certain things fall apart. So if we're putting it out there, there is definitely validity what the situation is it's just could it fall apart sure there's always that chance Mm -hmm. yeah i know for sure um i i want to ask a little bit just about the relationships and going back like how how long does it take for you to build trust um do you, you know is it very much push and pull just explain to that how you manage these relationships and is it just like a hey have you know have a great summer like how does that all work (laughs) Uh, some of it definitely takes a lot of time, um, you know, and it depends on the nature of of the relationship initially. Like if, if it's a cold call, so to speak, then it's, you know, there's a lot of give and take. There's a lot of um, let's see how this kind of evolves. And you see them in person when you're on the road. Let's grab drinks. Let's grab dinner, or coffee. Or let's hang out in the press box um, and get to know each other a little bit more. And there's a bit of a feeling out process there, um, especially from you know, their side of things, because they want to know how legit you are and how full of crap you aren't. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it, some of it definitely takes time. The, the, the fresher the relationship, the more give and take there is initially. Um, the longer things go, there's always that give and take um, mm. as well. But but because you've known someone for they know they're you know, not. five, 10, 15. Yeah, exactly. And, and they can be straight up with you and they tell you information that you're not going to put out. Um, you know, you want to stay on top of things. Um and they're giving you a heads up on certain things, but they know that you're not going to go running to your phone and start tweeting something or yeah. go on air and say, Hey, this is happening or that's happening. Um, but it definitely, it definitely takes time and, and those relationships evolve. And then at the same time to help with other relationships, you've got that ability to vouch for somebody. Yeah. Yeah. As, uh, as well. Say this guy's legit. He's not going to screw you over and vice versa. I may say, Hey, this is somebody you may want to talk to. Um, they may be able to help you out in certain areas. I trust him or her or whatever. Before I go to the NHL, because I have a couple of questions about, obviously, uh, as you know, the league very, very well. Um, What's it like on like trade deadline day or July 1st? (laughs) July 1st, maybe barring Twitter breaking down um, this year. Give us like a little glimpse into what a day like that looks for you. Um, it's changed the last couple of years for me because I, I, I now do, um, for NHL network on the television side, I'm, I'm on air. Um, so I've got my camera set, set up. Um, 
and I'm, I'm, it's filming the whole time, right? So I'm, I'm tweeting and whenever there's breaking news, I have to jump on. So I have to be now cognizant of I'm going to be on air as soon as something happens. Um, but it's, it's, it's a lot. Um, it's a lot leading up to it too. Cause again, you want to pull as much information as you can, and then you have to try to connect dots afterwards. So this conversation that happened a few weeks ago, you're starting to see or hear that it's being revived. Well, okay, how do I stay on top of it? Who do I need to contact? How often do I need to contact these people before they say, Dave, I'm going to kill you if you message me one more time or call me one more time. <laughs> so you have to be respectful of, of that yeah. too. Uh, but trade deadline day is you're going to bed about three, four in the morning the night before or morning before. You're waking up at about you know seven, unless you're in studio, you're probably heading there a lot uh, really? sooner. I, I'm, you know, Fortunate I get to at least do this from home for now. We'll see how March goes. Um, but, you know, you're up at seven and, all right, let's get this, let's get the ball rolling. Let's get the coffee going. And, hey, has anything changed in the last 24 hours or 10 hours or, or yeah. what have you? And you're and you're staying on top of it with everybody that you talk to. It's it's It can be a lot. And then you've got the on air. So you're doing, you know, whether it's a television appearance or you're breaking off to do a radio hit. Um Man. It, it's it, it's it's a lot my phone will be plugged in as often as it can be to stay charged and <laughs> you get the ipad and you're, you're multitasking away your laptop and everything it it can be um pretty gruesome actually that um mm -hmm. uh, when, when was it it was actually for agency same situation actually on on free agency although there's a bit of a later start because um you can't officially sign till yeah. noon on july 1 so it you get a little bit of a buffer um, but same deal. We were on air from whatever it was, I think 10 AM to, to four or five, there was a bit of a one hour break. And then on the radio side on Sirius XM NHL network radio, um, I did the recap day show for three hours. <laughs> so it was a, it was a very long, long day, um, as, as part of it. So, uh, you got to stay hydrated. You got to get like double pay or something like that for those days. Cause it's uh, <laughs> definitely overtime. Uh, I want to go a little bit, some quick hitters just because I have you here. Um, yeah. I'll start with the sends a little bit. Uh, I know your, your colleague, Anthony DeMarco reported that they're trying to trade maybe Joseph and a first round mm -hmm. pick um, to get off that contract. Maybe explain what you think the sends might be doing to, to get some cap space. Is it Joseph or whoever? And then maybe what a contract for Shane Pinto might look like. Yeah. Um, well, as we're, as, as we're doing this, Steve Stayhouse is having his intro press conference. That's why I'm kind of looking, looking down every once in a while. Um, but um, so that, so the situation there is they obviously have to clear out money. Now it's not just Shane Pinto related. And by the way, I think he's going to be in that two and a half and I, we've reported this before, but basically two and a half million dollar range. That's the ballpark on an AAV probably on two years. Um, but in order to accommodate that, they've got to get money out, but there's also that PTO guy, Josh Bailey, Yep. that they like. Yeah. So you're not only creating space for Pinto, you've got to be cognizant of the possibility and likelihood that you're going to have to bring in a guy like Bailey around a million bucks. Um, so it's almost three and a half to 4 million. You ultimately need to clear somehow. Um, now, if it's only two and a half, then you've got enough money for him, for Pinto. And unfortunately you lose out on, on Bailey if that's ultimately what they want to do. Um, but they've been trying to move Joseph for, for a little bit here. And the asking price to take on a, a $2.95 million cap it for three years has been a first round pick or um, an equivalent level prospect. Now, could that change? Could it end up being a second round pick and a good prospect? Absolutely. But the asking price, um, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. and, and Anthony's work on that was, was, it was bang on. Um, and it, we're just waiting to see, and they're waiting to see how this can develop. Are there injuries that are going to occur in the next week before season starts that may provide a slot open for a team that may not necessarily have too much cap space and may not necessarily have room, but now all of a sudden, Oh, well now we've got a slot that we can open up to get a guy like Matthew Joseph in, in, in the lineup. Now Philly has been the team that's been connected to it. There are a few other teams that have been kind of, um, lurking a little bit to see if, if you know, Dorian changes his mind and, and says, okay, I will give up a pick or I will give up a prospect. Um, but so far we're still in, in that, in that waiting mode, but um, it, it's, it's a lot. You're starting to hear others. You, see, you hear Brandstrom's name out there. You hear Zub's name out there. Um, so they may have to get 
that we may see a couple different things happen if they want to make the additional moves, Pinto Bailey, or maybe something else um, that they're trying to make. How, how long, like you, you talked about Steos, and I just want to ask you, like, is that like how long of a leash is Pierre Dorian having right now? Because it seems as though like he's, he's not just someone coming in, but uh, being his boss now. Well, I mean, the, the fact that Michael Anlauer, um, their new majority owner, came out and, and said, with Steve and Pierre in place, we have a sound base. Okay. It leads me to believe that uh, Pierre's not going anywhere anytime soon. Okay. Um, the, you know, so uh, that's, that's, you, you're trying to read from that perspective. It didn't look like he was going to make any immediate changes with the current staff outside of adding to it. And then he adds, you know, Steve, Steve Stales, um, who's a great mind, great hockey guy. Mm-hmm. I think this is a fantastic hire for the Sens. Um, but I think they're going to see how the season plays out before deciding the ultimate future on, on Pierre Dorio. Uh, I want to go to Nylander and the Leafs, uh, is playing center does that get them to 10 million dollars like what's happening there between the two sides they're trying to well he wants 10 plus um okay and and he's he's been steady on that um and this is a risk on both sides for a variety of different reasons like if if he goes out and scores another 40 goals and puts up 90 points well guess what it's now 11 million Mm -hmm. um you know if not more uh but if he you know he hits 30 and 75 does that put them back in that $9 million ballpark that the Sens, excuse me, the, the, the Leafs have been pushing for eight and a half to nine. So uh, it, it, it is a risk on both sides, um, but he's confident in playing the waiting game and he thinks he can replicate those numbers. Now playing center, I'm curious to see how that goes. Um, mainly because you're looking at this, you're going, okay, well, now you've got Domi, uh, Nylander and Yarncrook for now. And then you've got Nyes, Tavares. Put someone's name in. Yeah, exactly. You know. Yeah. So yeah. You, you, and with all due respect to Sam Lafferty and some of the other guys right now, I mean, you, you don't have somebody on that right side to now play with Tavares and Nyes. And maybe you don't need it in terms of stability there. But if you're trying to create three lines that can do some damage, you've got to have the resources to, to pull that off. And, and if you're, you know, if, if the arsenal's a little bare on one side, it's not going to have that same impact. So I'm curious to see how long that lasts before they end up slotting Nylander back on the wing. And maybe they don't. Maybe it works out great. But they're taking a chance, and, and it, it gives them a, a one, two, three kind of punch where you don't necessarily limit ice time for everybody. You just spread it out a little bit more. And maybe if somebody's playing 90 well. seconds less a night, yeah, or, or if, someone's, if they're playing a little bit less, Maybe it gives them a little, keeps them uninjured for the duration of the season. Or if somebody's playing really well, just like goaltenders, if you're platooning and you ride the hot hand, you have that opportunity to do it with one of those three lines in Toronto. Yeah, no, maybe maybe it gives more time uh, for Matthews to be on the PK. I think that's what everyone wants. But uh, I want <laughs> I want to go to yeah, uh, why not the Jets uh, a little bit because uh, you know I know the team very well. Just uh, what's happening there with Hellebuck and Shifley? Like, is what are the chances either of them are, are extended after this year? It's it's I think the chances are better with Hellebuck. Okay. Um, than than Mark Shifley for now. Um, for a few different different reasons. Um, but with, with Hellebuck, I mean, first of all, if you're Winnipeg, you trade him or let him walk, who the hell's coming in? Um, yeah. that, that's, that's a gaping, gaping hole. Um, now, you don't want to lose a top center, but if you're looking at the two situations, um, you may need to put a little bit more emphasis on the importance of having a goaltender of that caliber um, to complement the rest of your roster. Like you, you're seeing these, this trend now of, okay, well, Vegas did it and Hill, yep. Hill eventually took over and that was great. And Colorado won with Grubauer and, and so on and so on, or, or Kempfer, excuse me. Um, and he wasn't, you know, top tier and all that stuff. That's, that's all great. But um, look at the defensive cores that both of those teams had going in, you know? <laughs> so, you, you know, if you have a guy like Hellebuck, or, you know, Tampa prior with, with Vasilevsky. I mean, bonus that you've got that great goaltender there. But at the same time, um, you don't – like, you can offset the fact that you don't have top-tier, uh, you know, sound defense if uh, your goaltending 
is up to snub. But at, and conversely, if you've got one of the best decoys in the league, you can offset that with having not one of the best goaltenders in the league. Um, with the overall depth of the Winnipeg Jets and a good but not great defensive core, I think it for them they're they're more value. There's more value in keeping a guy at least for now in, in Connor Hellebuck, who's correct me if I'm wrong. He's not 30 yet, or just yeah, turned 30, or is turning it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So um, I think th- there were some discussions already at camp. I think those will carry out. Um, I think they were re-engaged with with Shifley's camp as well. Um, but I, I think if if they remain competitive and are pushing for a wild card spot and are in the thick of things in that race. Um, I, I think they're going to hold on to both of them and then just let it ride. Wow. Well, that would be terrible for Jets fans if both of them just left in free agency. Yeah. Uh, before I let you go, last kind of question, just obviously Backlund signed a, a two-year deal, became the captain on the same day. I don't know if I've ever seen that before, but uh, <laughs> just what what's up with maybe Lindholm, who seems to be kind of wanting, wanting the bag, as they say, and Hannafin, who's been a bit murky about uh, uh, about Stain and Calgary, both those guys, one year left on their deal. What what happens in Calgary? Do you think? Um, I think. Well, I think they're going to let they're going to see how the season kind of plays out. Um, and this is a team that anticipates being in not just wildcard contention, but top three in the Pacific. Um, that's what their goal is. That's what their their vision is and mindset is. So if that's the case, trading Hannafin, you're not going to get an equal type of return. So and not just Hannafin, Zadorov is a UFA. Um, Tanev is a UFA next summer. Um, Zadorov isn't signing either. So, you know, you, you kind of have to wait these things out. And maybe there's a change of heart. They do really well and they say, screw it. I, I want to stick around with this group. I believe in this group. Um, doesn't sound to, like it will be the case with Hannafin, but that's fine. That's his preference. He'll play out the season and, and go from there. Lindholm has been as vocal as Backlund in wanting to stay. Now the difference was back then wanted to see how the team was going to go over the off season and see how things happen in camp. They re-engaged, um, I think over the weekend and they got this deal done pretty quickly. Lindholm, there was back and forth throughout the summer, but in snippets. So there was, you know, okay, we'll talk today. And then in a few weeks we'll re re-engage and has anything changed and so on. He wants to stay, but he wants to get paid. You said it, he wants, you know, he wants the bag. So, can you give nine million bucks to Elias Lindholm? Maybe, probably. You may have to, um, but if you let him ride into the season now, playing with Jonathan Huberto, what happens if he gets ninety plus points? Oof. So now that's you're, you're you're throwing like again risk. You know, we're going back to Nylander and Toronto. Same thing. Very very risky type of situation on both fronts because he can get hurt or he can have a sh- crappy season. Um, but probably not, but I mean, mm-hmm. those are all possibilities. Right. So, um, you know, Calgary's taking a bit of a chance here, but they understand that they're going to have to pay a premium ish for that type of a player who I still think is one of the most underrated centers, um, two way offensive caliber type centers in the league. Uh, so we'll see kind of how this goes, but it, still you're looking at around 9 million bucks um, to keep Lynn home in Calgary and, I don't know if they have much of a choice, but to do that. Well, thank you so much, David, for taking the time and doing this. I, I'll just give you the floor, anything at the fourth <sighs> period. And maybe if you could, who's your maybe Stanley Cup pick quickly as well? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> that changes every like 24 yeah. hours at least because there's so, there a lot of good teams. I'm going to think on that as I – Okay. Um, our video content will continue um, throughout the course of the season. We're going to be doing some fun stuff at some of the different events that are out there. Dennis Bernstein was just in Australia for the Kings and Coyotes games. Uh, We'll be at Heritage Classic in Edmonton. Um, We've got some fun stuff in November in Boston. Uh, We could share a little bit more about that um, later on at campus yet. Uh, But middle of November, we'll be in Boston doing some cool stuff. Um, Winter Classic, All-Star Game in Toronto, our backyard here. There's a lot going on that we'll be revealing later on in the season that we'll be doing. Um, and giving fans some pretty cool access and opportunities to be part of some of the stuff that we're doing. So, uh, yeah, we're just we're just gearing up for a really big season, an exciting season um, as well. More content, more video content, everything. Um, magazine drop, we'll see. Um, and cup winners, man. 
I'm still, it's, I, this is, you, this you is still best beat. Canadian team. If you want, you can, I feel like that might be simpler for some people. Best Canadian team yeah. should be Edmonton. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think Edmonton has a, has a legit chance. If the goaltending stays, stays strong or stable, whoever it is, Skinner Campbell wakes up, gets going again. Um, uh, I think Edmonton has a really good shot. I think they're going to look to add another piece on that blue line, but we'll see as the season moves on. I think they'll be there. Toronto will be right behind them kind of in the East. I like the additions the Leafs made too. So uh, I, I'm not expecting an all Canadian final. I think Vegas has the, the, the juices to make some noise again. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see kind of how this, how this goes. I, I can't, honestly, I haven't, really made a final decision yet on who I think is, is going to win the cup. There are a few teams that really have an opportunity um, to pull it off. Um, I'm still trying to, like, I don't know if Jersey's there yet. And I don't think Carolina's, I, 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 there's some holes for me in Carolina um, that not fully sold yet on, on them being a legit like cup favorite. Um, But, you know, I, I think, uh, I think it'll be a fun season overall. I think we're going to see a few surprises too along the way. Well, David, I, I really appreciate you taking the time. Everyone should check out the fourth period. Amazing stuff as you've gone on about and have a have a great year. Hopefully, uh, you know, maybe maybe for myself, I'd like an all Canadian Stanley Cup and uh, <laughs> your, you know, stay in the country without changing your passport too much or doing that. So overall, David, yeah. I, re- I really appreciate you taking the time. I know how busy you are and uh, have a great year. No, thank you. You too. Really appreciate um, you having me on. And that all Canadian matchup would be f- easy on travel or easier on, <laughs> on travel from selfishly. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be against it. Uh, a cup coming back home to, to Canada would be pretty nice too. So thanks yeah. so much, David, and uh, have a great day. Awesome. You too, man. Thanks.